Greetings everyone and welcome to Time with the DuSable, your headquarters for all things related to the museum. I am Letitia Ransom, the Human Resources Director at the Museum of African American History. To learn more about us, please visit our website at www.dusablemuseum.org or give us a call at 773-947-0600 or stop by for a visit at 740 East 56th Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Today, my guest is Talea Stovall. She is an author, a speaker, and a life purpose coach. <laughs> Today we are talking about your vision and your passion. A satisfied employee is a productive employee. And when you talk about being satisfied holistically, what comes to mind is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is a theory in psychology proposed by Abraham Maslow in his 1943 paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, and fully expressed in his 1954 book, Motivation and Personality. So each level of the hierarchy, the foundation of the hierarchy must exist before any other level can be obtained. Take the Winter Olympics, the 2018 Winter Olympics. I've been enjoying that. How fulfilled do you believe a gold, a silver, or a bronze winner is? The gold winner has to be on top of the world. They have just been announced the best in the world. And so they are pretty fulfilled. A silver has just been announced the second best in the world. They could be pretty devastating that they probably lost by a fraction. Maybe not so fulfilled at the time. And then a bronze winner. They're so happy to be on the platform. They're probably the most fulfilled. Just happy to be a part of that number. Which brings me to our guest, Talia. You left your corporate career to pursue your dreams. I did. Can you tell me a bit about that journey? Well, the journey started when I was a little girl. <laughs> I like to tell people, when I was a little girl, I was always passionate about writing. So whenever I felt strongly about something, I had to put it in writing. I still do. So when I was a little girl, I get mad at somebody in my family, I would write a detailed letter listing the heinous crimes they committed against me and why I wasn't going to be their friend anymore. My brother called them hate notes because he got most of them. But by the time I was 13, I knew that I wanted to be an author. Writing was just something that just came naturally to me. So I was in high school. That was always my best subject. But in high school, those counselors started telling me, you're really good at math and science. You should be an engineer. You should go into school for engineering because that's where all the money is these days. So I thought, OK. And see, when you don't feel strongly enough in your purpose, you'll let yourself be dissuaded by other voices instead of really following what it is that you're passionate about. So I went to engineering school. Well, you know. You know me well enough to know I don't have a degree in engineering <laughs> because I, after three years, changed my major. I went into business. I got my MBA in marketing. I went to work at a bank. For many years I was in banking, but no matter what department I was in at the bank, I always ended up being the person who was the newsletter editor or wrote the training manuals, the disaster recovery manual, presented the training. Whenever anything had to be written or presented, they always seemed to find me. <laughs> so I say that your passion is in you from the time that you're young. Okay. And so we just have discovered. So after many years of misery in corporate America, you know how that Sometimes that Monday night, Sunday night around 9 o'clock p.m., I don't know if any of your viewers have ever gotten that pit in their stomach around 9 o'clock when you're thinking, i got to go there again tomorrow. Then the next week, i got to go back to that place that I hate. And so that's how I was feeling. And I just knew, I felt like I was just being made so uncomfortable that I didn't have a choice but to lead. I had a, had a coach, and he asked me why he th I thought I was so miserable. I said, so that I don't have a choice but to leave. Mm -hmm. So... I made up in my mind that I was going to get a severance package. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're in HR. You're very familiar with those. <laughs> and I just, it was November of uh, 
2004. And so I just decided in my mind, I said, Christmas is coming. I'm going to get this great severance package. I'm not going to have to come back to work in January. So that was pretty exciting. And I know so what, if any of you out there have ever felt that way, do give us a call. If you have call. ever realized your passion, your vision, call us at 312-738-1060. We would love to take your calls. Yes. So you decided, and have, has anybody felt that way before? I just can't see myself going back to that job anymore. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so. and I was there. So it was November, December came, Christmas, New Year's, January, I was back at my desk and I was like, God, why am I here? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to get a package. I'm supposed to be gone. But the feeling wouldn't go away. And so that Friday, I remember I was sitting at my desk and I just had this strong feeling. I said, today's the day. Today is the day. I went to the restroom. I said a prayer. I said, God, if today's the day, I'm ready for it ready for my package. About 30 minutes later, my boss came over to my desk and she asked me to go in the, in the office with her and her boss and they slid this piece of paper across the table. Now, I had been through three mergers and I was kind of mergered out. Mm -hmm. I was kind of ready to go so I was being given a severance package and I was so excited on the inside I was dancing but of course on the outside with my boss and her boss I was very serious and listening to what they had to say. And so they let said, me ask you this, mm -hmm. when at the time that you were very distraught about being at work. What part of Maslow's hierarchy do you think you were at? I think I was in this third step. I'm going to point to it, if you mm -hmm. don't mind, here mm -hmm. on the screen. Safety. All my physio physiological needs were taken care of. Mm -hmm. They were paying me well. Mm -hmm. I had my condo and car, and my bills were all paid. So I was. So you, know, you had that. your basic right. needs. But it was that whole safety. I think I was, they call it the, the, the golden handcuffs. Uh -huh. Hi, I think we have a call. Okay. Okay. Not yet? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So I had So your basic so, needs were taken care right. of. But I had those golden handcuffs where I was afraid. It was that safety net. I think I was stuck on that of I got to be safe and stay here. I didn't have the courage to step out. I wanted to go, but I was afraid to step out on my own, so I think I needed that little extra push. Have any of you ever <laughs> felt like that? If you have, give us a call. Call mm -hmm. in at 312-738-1060. Have you ever been scared to follow your passion, mm -hmm. follow your dreams, step out on faith? So as we indicated earlier, the foundation hierarchy need has to be met, mm -hmm. and that's food, water, warmth, a place to lay your head before you can consider any other of the hierarchy. So, mm -hmm. uh, Talia was saying she was in stuck in the safety. You right, didn't feel right. safe. You didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel safe jumping out there on my own. And and you don't always have to stay in on one level on the hierarchy. You can move rubber <laughs> yes, around. Yes, right. And so yeah, so that's where I was. And I was in that office. I was so excited. And and then they told me, well. You know, they were giving pretty good packages back then. They said, well, you have anywhere from two weeks to 60 days. You can figure out what you want to do. I said, oh, I already know what I want to do. I said, I can be, you know, two weeks is good enough. I just want to be here long enough for you guys to plan my party. Okay. So, and then I, and I said, well, you've got a lot of talent. You can do so many things. I said, I already know what I want to do. I said, I want to write and I want to speak. I had met Les Brown by that time, and I knew I was going to start doing some training with him and working with him. And when I mentioned Les Brown, my boss said, Les Brown, he, he was our speaker for our national sales conference. You got to be hungry, and they're getting all excited. And I thought, okay, you're essentially firing me, and you're getting excited telling me what, about what I'm saying I'm going to do. But that's how purpose works. Yes. When you get into your purpose, you get excited about your purpose. You realize what you were created for, then other people that... You they don't kinda, even expect start getting excited too. They kind of confirmed <laughs> where you have been exactly. for a while on exactly. the hierarchy needs. Right. So listen, I hear you have a model. What is your model? My motto is use your passion to live in your purpose. Okay. Because I believe that whatever it is that you're passionate about is going to come out. And, and it's typically in you from the time that you're a child. And a lot of people don't realize that. I have a business partner. Who and that's kind of the steam part of the the hierarchy need. If um, Once you get there, that's mm -hmm. when you are actually in even moving into that self-actualization. When you really realize your full purpose, that's when you're moving into that self-actualization. Okay. I, I have so many examples of not only from my life, but a business partner of mine, she is a visual artist. But when she was a little girl, she used to paint on the walls in her rented apartment. But her mom was smart enough to realize that instead of 
fussing at her for painting on the walls, she encouraged her in her art. My, my niece was the same way. She used to just draw. My brother was the same way. He was always drawing cars. And he's an architect now. My niece is an art teacher. She has her master's in art. So, so Leia, tell me this. Mm -hmm. How can someone struggling out there trying to realize their passion and mm -hmm. their purpose, what is one way, one exercise they can do to kind mm -hmm. of... Um, solidify or keep it mm -hmm. at the forefront to stay focused it is so easy to be distracted it with really life's is. inconvenience what yes. is a, a tool they can use to stay focused on their passion well the, what I always tell people is that they should think about what they always love to do when okay. they were a child think about what they do better than anybody else and if you don't know I tell people if they don't know ask somebody close to you because they can tell you your best friend Somebody in your family, they'll tell you that, you know, you're really good at counseling people. You always give the best advice. Well, maybe counseling could be your calling. You make the best sweet potato pie or potato salad, whatever it is. Maybe there's some cooking, some culinary skills that you haven't really realized. The problem with that passion and that purpose is a lot of times we undervalue whatever it is that comes naturally to us. So we don't think it's anything special. So we don't even notice it. I never thought I could just always write. It was just something that came naturally to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'd, I'd write my seventh period essay in my sixth period class and get an A on it when I should have done it a week ago, but it's just because that's what came naturally to me. So what is a way for someone to keep that goal or mm -hmm. that passion up front? I brought in the New Year's, New Year's Day doing a vision board. I that was too. so much fun. Yes. Can we talk a little bit about Absolutely, vision boards yes, and what they do for you, really how they motivate you and exactly. keep you focused on your mission? They really do. And I just created my new 2018 vision board too as well and got together with some friends and did that. It's. I always say my favorite books is write the vision and make it plain. So I used to be one of those that would write the New Year's resolutions, realize those don't work. Then I would make a list of goals and I'd, they'd look fabulous. Break them down by category, then I'd save them on my computer and maybe print them out, stick them in a folder, but I wasn't looking at them every day. Mm -hmm. So the power about a vision board is that it's something that you can look at every day. It motivates you because you're seeing what's to come. You're seeing what's in front of you. So vision board is just anything that, and you can make it a long range or you can make it a short term. You can have goals that are within the next three months, and I've had people who have uh, seen all of their goals come to pass, and then they have to make a new vision board. You can rip it off, you can cover it up, whatever works for we you. We would love to hear from you if you ever created a vision board and those visions and dreams came true. We would mm -hmm. love to hear from you. Do give us a call. The number's on the bottom of your screen, 312 738-1060. We would love to hear from you if you created a vision board and those visions came true. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something else about visions. I have, I have to share a few of mine. And they weren't even on a board because this was when I before I even discovered the power of a vision board. But I created those visions in my oh, head. Oh, I think we have a caller. Oh, we have a caller. So yes. before we get into that, I'll put a pen in that. Okay. We'll hear the caller first. Hello there. <laughs> Hi, my name is May. And I'm, I'm a baby boomer, and I'm about to retire in a few months. And I, I know what my passion is. I just don't know how to get the courage to step out there and start again. I, I kind of feel like I'm almost too old no, to start something never. new. Well, Moses was think? 80 when he led the children of Israel. <laughs> What advice do you have for me? I would, my advice is that it's never too late. I have a long list of people that I can go through with you who started living their dreams late in life. Grandma Moses, famous painter, she didn't pick up a paintbrush until she was 76 years old. And she still became a world-renowned painter. It's never too late, May. You're just retiring. You're still, you still got a good... 30 years to left, left to live in your passion, so it's never too late. And I if, just encourage mm -hmm. you not to not to be scared. Step out there yes. on your passion. And look, getting back to Maslow's hierarchy, you're in the safety zone, but you need to uh, aspire to go up to that esteem and self-actualization. You can do it. Um, surround yourself around positive people. Mm -hmm. Talia and I have been colleagues for many of years, mm -hmm. and we encourage each other. You need to surround yourself around people that want you to succeed. And May, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a list. Draw a line down the middle of a paper. On one side, I want you to put all of the things 
that you are afraid of that might happen if you step out and follow your dreams. On the left side, on the right side of the paper, I want you to write down all of the wonderful things that could happen if you step out and follow that dream. And then I want you to look and see which one of those lists is the longer. And that should answer the question for you as to whether you want to step out there. I've never seen anybody have a longer list on the left and the right. Usually there's one or two things that we might be afraid of and they're long shots that they probably will never occur. But when you think of all the benefits, all the gratification, all the wonderful things that could come out of you following your dream, that kind of makes it a no-brainer. You got to do it. And the second step, the vision board that we were talking yes. about, and putting it, pinning it on your refrigerator, looking yes. at it every day. I'm that 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 impact does help comes into fruition. It's happened for me. It was very yes. helpful, and I really believe the power of vision boards. Yes. And I know if you want to find more out about Talea's products as a speaker and a life coach and vision board activities, call the museum, and you can reach us. At 773-947-0600. Any information you'd like to know, more information about mm -hmm. anything we're talking about today, mm -hmm. do call the museum. And we still have time for some callers to call us in today and ask us questions. Thank you for calling in, May. So just to get back to what we were saying about those visions, even before I discovered vision boards, mm -hmm. I knew from the time I graduated from college that I wanted to teach on, a co on the college level. That's just something I knew I wanted to do. Teaching uh, my natural gifts and I also help people discover their natural gifts. So your natural gifts are in you from the time that you're born. So I'm just a natural teacher and encourager. So those are the things that come out in my speaking, my writing. And so I just, that was something I wrote down. I want to teach on the college level. I've taught at four different schools and I didn't go after any of them. They all just kind of fell into my lap naturally. Uh, one through one of my church members asked me to speak at her class and she took my resume and the school called me and said, well, can you teach this marketing class instead? One, I was in an organization and a couple of colleges, schools came to them and they said, we need some adjunct faculty members to teach these communications classes and I sent my resume in out of all the people. I ended up getting both of them. So I've taught it at four different schools. I always wanted a radio show. So I wrote down, these are the guests I'm going to have on my show. These are the topics I want to talk about. Out of the blue, or so I thought, I got a call from the general manager of a radio show. I'd never heard of him, but he said, somehow I ended up on your mailing list. I don't know how he ended up on my mailing list. He said, but I like what you have to say. I'd like to know if you'd like to have a show on my network. So for a year, I had a show. For free. I didn't have to pay anything. I had a radio show. So Talea <laughs> is a testament that if you yes. speak it into existence, it yes. can. And if you really believe in it and you tailor your activities to pursue those goals, they Absolutely. can come true. Absolutely. Even with books. I self-published my first one. The second one, I said, I don't want to self-publish it this time. I said, God, I'd like to have a book deal. I said, but I don't want to have to get an agent and shop it around and go to different publishers. I said, I just want a deal. So a friend of mine told me about a contest that Hay House was having, and she said, you know, and I put it off and put it off. I said, well, let me go ahead and finish this book that I've been writing. I finished it, and months later, of course, I started finishing it, and I turned it in three hours before the... Wow. Uh, <laughs> you have another call. Yeah. Hold your thought. Okay. okay, yes, you're on the air. Hello, my name is Mike, and I've been in IT for 25 years, and I have this passion for writing. I want to explore but then my income is tied to IT, so I, it's, it's kind of makes me nervous try, trying to give up IT to explore something I'm not really familiar with, with business writing. Mike. Okay, say your name again. Mike. Mike, you don't have to give up your career. You can write when you're outside of working hours. I would suggest starting off that way. If you don't want to leave your career, I can totally understand that. You don't, it doesn't take 24 hours a day to write a book. So if you just write some in the evenings or on the weekends just and it just adds up and next thing you know you'll have a book so I would not recommend until it can replace your income exactly. you want to keep your uh, exactly. <laughs> your full-time job right exactly. yes yeah. absolutely well thank you for if calling yeah. so getting back to your model yeah. how did you come up with that model and how does it drive you to do the things that you know you do to pursue well I, you know I don't know how I came up to it just that is just the way I feel about things. Like I was saying, when I, uh, I got the book deal out of okay. 4,000 submissions, I wow. won the book deal. And, you know, that it was something that I was just so passionate about. And I just, 
that motto came to me that if you use your passion and you really feel about it the first people who bought both of my books even before they were out because I was talking about them and I was passionate about it and they were people who weren't even in the demographic that I wrote for but because they told me they were so excited about the passion that they saw in me and they were so energized by the fact that I stepped out of my comfort zone which is what we were we we're so afraid to do sometimes and that's what we were telling May go for yes, it May. we've got go to step outside May. of that, do it. that comfort zone that it'll energize other people other people will get excited and support whatever it is that you're doing so and I know you are um, would like to know more about everything that we're talking about today and if you call the museum 773-946-0600 we can elaborate on all of the things we talked about today some of Talia's products that um, she's working in what's next for you what's next for me yes. well you already know about one of my newest passions yes. <laughs> I started making jewelry and I just love that so I'm just caught up in that when I'm bored that's something I do and then I also am just starting to work on the next book so that's something that is out there too so I'm excited about those things I want to also create some more information products and there's just I just have so many things that still I'm excited about doing in the future and so this uh, Talia story sure is proof on how following your passion and your vision can bring you to a wonderful place when we talk about the Maslow hierarchy and um, every employer wants a productive happy employee and really if you know you're happy and you have realized the self actualization of the Mas of the theory so at your all of your other needs have been taken care of in terms of your basic needs a home and safety and then belongingness and love with re relationships and wonderful friends like I have in Talia and then self-esteem mm -hmm. prestige and that's kind of um, where Talia is along with uh, realizing her dream <laughs> at prestige and that's just really it's so rewarding when one mm -hmm. can follow and reach their passion absolutely and I always say that there are no bad employees they're just people who are placed in the wrong job so you hear so many people complaining they hate their job it's because they're not in the right job when you put a person in the job that fits their passion their purpose what they're supposed to do in life you're gonna have a great employee so, um, and again, any more, any more calls? Call us. We have a few more minutes. Give us a call at 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. You've been spending time with the DuSable Museum of African American History, and we certainly have enjoyed talking to you today. We have a few more minutes. Is there any parting statements or anything else you'd like to I would just like to encourage people and I think I posted this the other day on Facebook I have a natural inclination just talk to people about what it is I'll meet somebody I'll say what do you do and they'll tell me I say well do you like it and they'll sometimes say yeah and then I'm really excited and sometimes they'll say no and I say well what do you want to do and they'll say and I say well why aren't you doing it and then they'll start telling me they'll start getting excited about whatever it is that they want to do and I'll say hey you know why don't you set some goals and just talk them through that and so I just want to just encourage everybody if there is something that's out there that you really have been wanting to do that's in the background of your mind that dig it back up dig those dreams back up and don't be afraid to go for it because they say you only live once. That yes, is, it sounds great cliche, advice. But <laughs> great advice. Do want to remind you to ch look at, check out uh, the DuSable Museum's website. There's a lot going on this month for African American History Month, and all of our activities are on the website. And I uh, invite you to check out the website and visit us. And look, uh, our time is running out, but we certainly uh, appreciate you tuning in to Time with the Do. And thank you so very much.